Well, it's match day four in the quest to qualify for Euro 2025 in the Under-21 Championship in Slovakia. Belgium are Scotland's next opponents in the nest here in Rosselaar, West Flanders. Belgium have won all three games so far and have nine points in the group along with Spain who top the group. Scotland three points behind after narrowly losing their opener in Spain but they've bounced back well in October beating both Hungary and Malta. This will certainly be a test for the young Scots tonight. And before the match we will start as we always do with the national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen Let's check out the Belgian lineup then. And Gilles Swerts makes three changes to the win over Hungary. Aster Vranch has been promoted to the A squad. Connie de Winter is not involved tonight. And Hamburg's Ignacy van der Bremt is not in the squad. That means that Jorna Spellers, Mario Stroikens, and the former Ross County Loney, Kazem Olegbaye, come in tonight. will be an important player for Scotland this evening. The match officials are from the Czech Republic, led by the referee Marek Radina. Okay. 
And let's check out the Scotland team then. And Scott Gamble makes four changes to the side that beat Malta at Fur Park last month. Liam Morrison is out due to an injury picked up this week. Ben McPherson pulled out of the squad. Josh Mulligan is injured while Alex Lowry drops onto the bench. That means that Adam Devine comes in along with Ibn Bowett, Lyle Cameron and the aforementioned Ben Doak. Kieran Bowie has scored three goals in his last two games for Scotland. He will be an important player tonight. Well, we're about to get underway here in the nest, as they call it, in Rossellar, West Flanders. A big, important game for Scotland in their quest to qualify for their first European Championships since 1996. I'm delighted to see tonight. I'm joined by former Scotland under-21 international Rory Loy. And Rory, from your point of view for Scotland tonight, it's going to be a difficult game, but just how tough do you think it will be? Good evening, Luke. I think it'll be a very tough game for Scotland, especially being away from home. Belgium were in their group last year. I don't think Belgium are quite as strong as they were during that campaign. But away from home against Belgium is always a tough ask. So we'll see how it goes. But two wins at the last two Scotland, so they're in good fettle. And yeah, when you think that Belgium after this one have Spain, Malta and then Spain again to come, then the big two in the group might be dropping points. So important for Scotland to get a positive result tonight. Well, Scott Kemmel has had his issues given the players that he has not got at his disposal. You think of the likes of Josh Doik, who's been promoted to the A squad and then the injuries and we mentioned Liam Morrison there being out picking up an injury this week an experienced uh, player now um, is somebody they look upon but the likes of Max Johnson and Tommy Conway not available it has been tough but maybe this is an opportunity for those tonight yeah that's how you get your opportunity uh, in football is quite often players missing out through injury through suspension and the guys you touch on you know Liam Morrison Max Johnson Calvin Ramsey Josh Doig Luis Farini is always miss, uh, also missing as well, and Tommy Conway, who scores gold, goals down in the English Championship. So, you know, Ben Doak through the middle tonight um, in a three up top. So, he's a danger man. He's the star. I think we all know that. I think Belgium know that. And it'll be interesting to see, to see how he performs in the evening in a central position. King cuts that out there. Forward it goes. Nobody there for Scotland. Going to have to be defensively sound tonight. And they were the last time they played Belgium because they were in the group last time out, uh, along with Kazakhstan, who are also in this group in the last day, uh, Euro qualifiers. So there are some survivors. Connor Barron, man of the match, the last time the two sides met, as CK just failed to control that. Scotland looking to win back possession. I know you covered that game last time out. Uh, Rory, um, when Scotland got that nil-nil draw, and Gilles Sverts there um, maybe had the luxury last time because Belgium had already qualified, but still, do you think that will be in the back of the, the likes of Conor Barron where he knows he can play well against good opposition? Yeah, it's, it's slightly more difficult when it comes to the, the age groups and the levels within countries because it's such a big turnover in players, so they don't have that experience and know-how. However, Conor Barron does. He's captain tonight in the absence of Liam Morrison, so he'll be in there and he'll believe that his squad can get a result. The 0-0 draw did take place when Belgium had already qualified. Uh, it was a 2-0 home defeat earlier in the season, uh, or earlier in the campaign, sorry, with Openda scoring... Um, he's on fire for Leipzig just now, scoring against the likes of Man City and Nicola Raskin scoring as well. So, like I said, I think Belgium were possibly stronger last year. Belgium looking to get forward. Well cut out there by Adam Devine. Featured once for Rangers this season in the League Cup against Morton. Given away, though, Scotland. Tatsu, the captain. And to Fafana. Back it goes to Lyson. Here's Engels. Lyson again, just his second cap. He made his debut last time out against Hungary. Tatsu, the captain. Playing for Monaco. Sardella. Stroikens. Belgium comfortable in possession here. Engels looking for CK forward, but cut out by Scotland and Ibn Bowett. Tries to get it down the field, it's run out of play. 
but how important is that going to be tonight, Rory, to get the likes of Ben Doak and Kieran Bowie involved in the play when you w will have to defend? Yeah, well, I think in these types of games, I mean, you can see already uh, with the pictures that Scotland are playing, effectively a back five. Um, you've got Devine and Anderson on either side who, yes, they are getting up in touch with our opposite fullbacks at times, as we see just now, but, you know, they're going to need to break out the five at some point as they come forward. Seekers cross, nodded away by Mullen. Cameron helps out by knocking it clear. The danger was there, but well defended as Duke goes down. No free kick. Yeah, I think um, Ben Doak feels he should have a free kick there for me. It wasn't a free kick, it was a bit soft. You know, it's well defended there as the ball comes in by Jeremiah Mullen. And apologies if you were offended by any bad language you heard there. I think a bit of frustration showing there that Ben Doak didn't get that free kick. Divine now to go forward for Scotland. Looking for Cameron. Scotland will settle for the throw-in. Yeah, as I was saying, I, I think if they are going to get Ben Doak involved in the game higher up the pitch, they will need to squeeze the game at times. I'm not saying in the first half necessarily, but at some point in the game, um, they've got good football players. The only thing you would wonder is with Ben Doak right through the middle, does he have that presence to pin a defender and bring others into the game? They may need to use the sides of the pitch more often than they use the centre of the pitch, as we see there. It's been fruitful for them, one enough throwing high up the pitch. Yeah, Hugo CK having to knock it out because Kieran Bowie had him under pressure there. Here's Ben Doak, forced to retrace his steps. And Connor Barron has experience in Europe this season with Aberdeen. King just losing possession and Matazzo now for Youssef Belgium looking to threaten here they could be in there's a chance on but good defending good covering there by Lewis Nielsen because Youssef Silla is looking to unload there good pace as well strength to get in front of Silla Hugo Siki Matatsu, the Monaco man. Here he is again. Belgium looking to link up well here. There could be a chance on. It's Oleg Bailly just over the bar. Well, he's scored in all three qualifiers so far, the former Ross County man. But he's, this is his first start of the campaign and he's looking dangerous. Yeah, it's a really good run, I have to say. It's a third man run from deep. Um, from Fofana Bowett notices far, too, far far too late and then the cutback's on and he's a little bit unlucky he's just trying to wrap his foot round it and wrap it into the top corner but it just evades the goal thankfully from a, from a Scotland point of view well, he's now playing his football at Circle Bruges he was a Southampton player last season but had loan spells at Ross County and also Harrogate only two goals for Ross County though they are both against East Fife in a League Cup group tie but he's certainly done well so far in this campaign but scoring as an impact, impact player you'd have to say coming off the bench in all three occasions in all three games and scoring Belgium have only scored four times in the three games so they've not been that potent yet but they certainly can be a threat they're looking to do so again here there's Oleg Bay looking for the space, forced wide though by Bowett, CK's cross, Devine has to get it clear for Scotland it's only as far as Engels who goes for goal Slicker can't hold on to it but it's Anderson who can clear yeah it bounces off the tough it's a very very decent strike uh, it has to be said from Arne Engels, just bounces right in front of the goalkeeper, the goalkeepers hate those he can't help but feel that Scotland need to get higher up the pitch Put more pressure on the ball. It's times they've got their whole back five in the six in the 18 yard box. And the danger not over for Scotland, although it is now. Just need to settle here. Jules Sperts, the head coach, ex Feyenoord and AZ player. 17 caps for Belgium himself from the A squad. There's Scott Gemmel who will be looking to 
try and get his team to a major tournament but it's also about progression for some of these young players and we have been able to see the progression made by those in recent years coming through the under 21s for you Rory is it a case of that progression for players or is it trying to get to a tournament as well just to kind of top that off no I think you need to get to a tournament I think regardless of the level you're at to play in a, a major finals at any um, age group is a, is a big deal you know it's a completely different format when I played as well we actually topped our group when I was in the under 21s and you still had to play a playoff um, uh, which Iceland beat us in unfortunately but no I think regardless that competitive edge in you wants to get to the finals Sardella to the byline good defending though by Jeremiah Mullen there's a lot of space in the midfield so far and Elliot Matazzo who's played against Scotland in that 0-0 draw last year is pulling strings as we see Sardella getting down the side there again just wonder if Leon King's taken a little bit of time to adapt you know more naturally plays centre back he is capable of playing midfield but he hasn't done it all that often and doesn't seem tandem with Barron uh, so far in the opening 10 minutes Engels delivers the corner nodded away by Mullen again but the danger not over for Scotland is CK's poor ball looking for Matazzo didn't happen for them there good defending though yeah a little bit of respite for Scotland really poor piece of play it has to be said from Hugo Sique just knocks the ball straight out the pitch Scotland need to regroup, communicate with each other and find a way to try and build into this game because it's been a bit of a slow start. Belgium have been excellent, it must be said. Conor Barron, the captain this evening. Mullen, the best ball back to Slicker, who is playing for the 12th time for the under-21s. His second cap was against Belgium in November 2021. And that was that 2-0 defeat at Tanadice as Doak looks to break free for Scotland. First real chance to get into the danger zone. Doak goes down. The referee is given a corner kick. Doak seems to have been caught there by the goalkeeper, Van der Voort. Yeah, I'd be interested to see that one again. I mean, he is absolutely lightning quick, Ben Doak. It's unbelievable the amount of ground he makes up. And as I was going to say earlier, you know, if you're defending deep for huge portions of the game, it's a massive thing to know there's a player of Ben Doak up the top end of the pitch who can cause problems, which is exactly what he does there. Let's see who gets the touch on the ball. Yeah, looks like they both get a slight touch. I don't think it's a penalty, to be fair. I um, don't know if he's actually hurt or not, but the fact that the Scotland throw has been given suggests that the referee thinks that Van der Voort got the touch, which it looked like he did, to be fair. No chance here for Scotland from the corner kick. Cameron goes short to Doak. First real opportunity for Scotland to test the Belgium defence. Devine's ball in. Mullen with the header. And there it is. Scotland are ahead. Their first attack of the match. And it's Mullen with the header. The Leeds United man. And Scotland are ahead. Unbelievable ball in from Adam Devine. It's a really, really well worked corner. He actually takes a poor touch. He means to shift it onto his right and put an in swinger by getting his boot round it. He takes a poor touch, but he shows just how capable he is with both feet. It actually bubbles up there, as you can see, and hits his shin. And a lovely chip ball into the centre of the box. And it's a beautiful run, you have to say, from Mullen in between the two defenders. And he makes no mistake whatsoever. Our eyes lit up. Um, look, as the ball made its way into the box, because you could see that run he was making. And my goodness, that's a great header. Well, fantastic stuff for Scotland. And you could say that all comes down to Ben Doak for winning that corner in the first place with not giving up, showing the danger that he possesses. But it was a good ball from Devine, who has lacked first-team action uh, with Rangers. He did have... I think he's been unlucky, look. A run of games last season, yeah. He played eight games last season uh, when there was injuries uh, to the likes of Barisic and Yilmaz, but... And, and most of the time he played on the left where exactly, he's yep. predominantly on the right well how do Belgium respond then they won't be happy with this Strykens here Lyson neat touch Tatsu couldn't get in there Strykens again oh like bait Matazzo Low ball cleared by Lewis Nielsen, the Hearts man on loan at Partick Thistle. Sardella. 
Fida Lyson. Now across to Spillers. CK. Oh, nice play there. And the free kick awarded. It was Fafana who managed to draw the foul from Matthew Anderson. Yeah, it did look a foul. Fafana, he just nutmegs him actually. He just catches him. So it's, it's a foul and no more. Correct decision. Ingles standing over this one to take. Scotland will need to be alert here. Belgium with the set piece opportunity. It was nodded down there by Silla, but he just couldn't direct it towards goal. Yeah, he finds space in the box. Not dissimilar to Mullen for the goal. And gets between two defenders. And, uh, you know, I think Gilles Schwertz will be very disappointed at how Belgium have conceded that goal. And you look, you know, Belgium have started well. Scotland just starting to get to grips with the game. That goal will do them the world of good in terms of their confidence and building from there. But, you know, you look at Belgium's previous results in the group. 1-0, 2-0 against Malta, 1-0 against Kazakhstan, 1-0 against... They're not blowing teams away. So that'll give Scotland confidence as well that the longer this goes on, maybe grab another, because Ben Doak, as we've already touched on, my goodness, he's... It's very rare to find a player who's so quick, but also so talented in terms of their touch and their finesse and their intelligence as well well it's important to have them at this level to help this team but there's going to come a time and it's been close already because Steve Clark's talked about it about he's been in contention to be in that A squad and you would think potentially with the Euros that that must be in his sights as well he's only played four times though for Liverpool yeah he has and you've got to take into consideration the fact that you know he's doing enough in training in the, within the Liverpool squad with world class players you know Mo Salah etc to show that he deserves time on the pitch and that's got to hold some weight uh, when it comes to the full national side because if he was at you know, any club in Scotland in my opinion he'd be playing every week here's Fafana into Silla Belgium again Looking to build here, trying to get an equaliser. Sardella. Engels goes for goal. Gathered there by Slicker rather easily in the end. Yeah, he's, he's chosen that option twice now, and it's not a bad strike again. You know, he goes with the laces, he goes through the ball, and it's straight down the keeper's throat, and Slicker does well to hold on to it. But, you know, if I was the Belgian side, I'd be slightly frustrated at uh, Arne Engels for, for choosing that option because when they move the ball quickly and side to side, they're, they're causing Scotland some problems rather than shooting from 40 yards, which Scott Gemmell will be delighted with. If one flies in the top corner, there's not a lot you can do about it. Here he goes again, Ben Doak, looking to put that Belgian defence under pressure. He's won a throw this time. Well, he started three games for Liverpool this season, two in the Europa League and one in the League Cup. But it's Matthew Anderson who is down just now. Might need some treatment. He's playing his football in Austria just now on loan. We see this move from Belgium again. They move the ball well. They really do. Belgium at times. It wasn't much of a move in the end, actually. But um, they do move the ball well at times. Um, Scotland have managed to deal with it so far. And long may that continue. Well, looks as if Aidan Denham might be coming on here. Anderson struggling. A bit of a blow, just 17 minutes in. And Matthew Anderson looks like he'll have to leave the field. But we'll wait and see. Well, Denham certainly getting ready. He doesn't look too happy about coming off. I think he feels he can play on Anderson. And it's such a shame if he does have to leave the pitch at this time. I think the decision's been made for him, look. Yep, so Denham will be coming on. The man playing with Hart of Midlothian. It's not looking to put the Belgians under pressure here. Wanting to work this one out. Lyson carrying the ball forward, going long now. Looking for Kazima Lightby. Cameron does well. He's going to look for Duke to run, but he has to settle for the throw. Yeah, the Belgian 
you know, the back three of Belgium there. <laughs> it was lacing there. They're petrified of Doak. Uh, they would rather kick it out the pitch than rather than try to take a touch because they've already witnessed their goalkeeper take a touch and before they know it, Doak's on him. So he's such a uh, good player to have, a good outlet to have for so many reasons. Well, Anderson off and it is Aidan Denham who comes on for his first cap at this level. Certainly impressed with Hart and Lothian this season, eight appearances, and he's featured three times in Conference League qualifiers earlier in the season. Made that start against Rosenberg, where Hart's won and got through. Do you remember your first under-21 cap? My first cap? I would have to say no, I don't. I've sco I scored a goal, one goal for uh, a number of appearances, just the one goal away to Azerbaijan many moons ago set up by Lee Griffiths so you know very long time ago unfortunately look attacks have caught there by Ibn Bowett he feels he got the ball but it will be a free kick to Belgium and the yellow card is out as well the referee was swithering whether to book him or not I think I don't think it helped that the Belgian player stayed down but hopefully we get a wee replay in a second just to assess exactly what happened it did look late on initial viewing yeah he just stands on the top of his foot and catches his ankle doesn't he that's a sore one must be said and I have to agree with the referee and showing the yellow card there he was just late to the ball and there's no malice in it but it doesn't look good no it doesn't and you know catches him right in the ankle with the stud as you say, look, it's not intentional, but the referee in that occasion can't sit and consider whether it's intentional or not. It happened, so, you know, the yellow card has to come out. That's a sore one for the Belgium captain. His 16th cap tonight, Eben Bowett, making his fifth appearance for the Scotland team. And it could be a sub here as well for Belgium. Here it is again. Oh, it does look sore. Like he's rolled his ankle and been stood on. Yeah, the more you see that, the more it doesn't look good. It's a real shame as well for Elliot Matazzo because whilst, you know, Scotland will probably be pleased to see the back of him, I don't think anyone wants the circumstances in which he's leaving the pitch because I think he's been excellent so far. Probably Belgium's best player. Yeah, he wants to give it another go. And he can stay on the field because Bowett was booked. So Hugo Siki. He's the man over this free kick. And again, danger for Scotland. CK's delivery. He's all the way to the back. Belgium claiming that there was a tug there, looking for a penalty kick. The referee from the Czech Republic says no. It's Sardella now to flight this one in far too deep. And danger over for Scotland. First and foremost, it's a marvellous ball in from Hugo CK, right where you'd want it. And I have to say, that looks like a dive. It looks like he just falls over. And the referee calls it clearly, and he's lucky not to get booked for simulation, in my view. Fida Lyson, the man going down. As the Belgian captain's back on the field, so that's a plus point for them, certainly. Ben Doak just couldn't take that one out of the air there. But Doak has shown in flashes that he can be dangerous. It's just trying to get Cameron and Bowie more involved in the game. As Belgium go on the attack again. Well, like Bay. Looking to add to his tally. Stroikens. Sardella. Cleared there by Leon King. Sardella again. Kazima like Bay. Stroikens finds Siki. Stroikens again. The Anderlecht man. Engels, who's had a couple of goes for goal already this evening. Stroikens has Siki out on the right, but decides to go to Engels again. Will he let fly this time? He opts for Sardella. Belgium content to move the ball about and wait for their opportunity. Olegby's low ball in, cleared by Mullen, the goal scorer. And it's a throw into Belgium. Yeah, nice and compact Scotland, defending well. 
Cameron goes down, no free kick. It was Silla, the man he was up against there, and he's won the corner. Well, Lyle Cameron felt he should have had a free kick in the box there, but it's a Belgium corner. He's been asked to do a tough job tonight, Cameron. He was pressing high up the pitch there, then had a 70-yard recovery run to help out Devine. Not easy. Scotland still lead 1-0 as Belgium have this corner kick well defended, but it's another corner. Bowett doing his job, though. How often do you see that? Man across the front post scoring a goal, and as you quite rightly say, look, Bowett sticking to his task and doing his job really efficiently, uh, effectively. Well, the referee, Marek Radina, just making sure that everything's in order between... The the two number 19s, Bowie and Silla. And Bowie's just warning the referee, given the last time, the player going down far too easily. Just to keep an eye out for it. It was lacing the last time. Engels to deliver then this time in at the near post. And Slicker somehow manages to keep that one out. It looked like it was going to sneak in, but what a save from the Scotland number one. Yeah, it's an excellent save. And <laughs> what did I say moments ago? That run across the front post. Siki's not picked up and it just deflects. Off well, it might be even Mullen. Uh, I think it maybe hits or Lason on the way through. And Slicker reacts so, so well. Pushes it away from danger and does well actually not to hit it into Cameron to go in the goals. And Scotland survive. It's a fantastic save. And it's going to take that tonight. It's always tough going away from home, but you're going to need to have moments like that. And Scotland doing well to hang on to their one goal lead. Midway through this first half, remember, Jeremiah Mullen scoring after 12 minutes with that header from a Adam Devine cross. Fafana now. As Devine had gone down there, and here he is in possession again, stretching for that one against the Belgian captain, Atatso. CK forced to go backwards, Lyson now. Sardella and Oleg Bay giving chase but Mullen comes in great challenge and Belgium will have to settle for the throw well this stadium holds right about 9,000 West Flanders Lyson now Spillers, CK, Engels, CK again. Lyson, the man who plays for Union Gilois. Stroikens and Matatso. Doing well to hold off Bowie. Scotland just have to concentrate here and make sure they're doing their task as Hugo Sique's ball forward. Slicker did call for that, but it was cleared by Nielsen. He did the right thing. Yeah, they defended superbly well. I think it took them 10, 15 minutes maybe to get used to the way Belgium were playing and maybe get used to the way they're, they're playing themselves, Scotland, but really well organised and come back, compact. Cameron doing well. Here's Connor Barron. Back to the goal scorer, Mullen. Slicker goes long. Don't try to nod it down, but the offside flag was up. That's, that was my one concern with Doak through the middle is you know, his physical presence. He's not going to pin a defender and take the ball in, which isn't his fault. You know, he's naturally a winger. That being said, he played a big hand in the goal. Adam Devine over on this left side now. Play's going to be called back, the advantage over, and Scotland have the free kick. King going down there, the late challenge. I don't think we quite seen the challenge, given the speed of the play, but it certainly was a foul. It looked quite intentional as well, possibly a little bit of retribution from 
Matazzo. Devine's ball forward. Past Cameron, but picked up by Barron. Scott will want to add to their lead here as we approach the half hour mark. Denham's first touch in the game, and he wins a fill after a light base challenge. And Connor Barron's been excellent in the middle of the pitch. He's pressing, he's non stop energy. He's passing as well, he doesn't often miss. Cameron goes short down the line to Doak. He loves a chance to take on his man. He goes down. And it's going to be a yellow card here for simulation. Now, this will be interesting to see this one again. Doak booked. Well, what do you think there, Rory? We'll need to have a little look at the replay, but how Lason wasn't booked for exactly the same thing not so long ago baffles me. See, I think that's a difficult one. I, me personally, I think when you're running at that speed, I don't think it's a penalty, but I also don't think it's a booking. I don't think the referee is able, in my opinion, to determine whether that's enough of a push to go down or not. Yes, I think it gets the decision right. It's not a penalty. I, I don't think it's a booking, personally. I don't think the referee can make that call of that was enough for you to go to ground or not. I think, you know, you give the, the goal kick and, and you move on. A chance now for Scotland. Doak into Cameron with the shot and it's two Scotland have done it again they've taken advantage of slack play and there is Lyle Cameron on his fourth appearance for the under 21s he has doubled Scotland's lead on the half hour mark well the disguise pass from Doak is marvellous and I have to say Martin van der Voet, 96 appearances for Genk he's won the Belgian Cup a couple of years ago he's having an absolute shocker you know, he played a big part in the first. And there he's there. Apologising to his teammates. Because it's his terrible pass that gives the ball away. Comes forward. And most players would shoot there. That's a lovely, beautiful pass. Then Lyle Cameron uses his body so, so well um, to hold off Jon Spielers. And finds the back of the net with a beautiful finish. And Scotland have been clinical look. And that's so key at this level. And Doak just such an intelligent player but Cameron as you say using his body but good close control and there we go Scotland double their lead Gilles Fertz doesn't know what to make of this I think Scotland have had two shots on target and scored two goals yeah quite yeah I think you're probably right to be fair um, although you know they looked a little bit shaky in the first 10 minutes Scotland getting to grips with things but since then I mean what we've had two long distance shots from Arnie Engels, I don't, I don't think we've had many clear-cut opportunities for Belgium. Touch wood. Oh, Barron catching Matazzo. And the referee not happy with uh, Lyle Cameron, who had something to say about that. But it was Barron that made the foul. And Belgium now, their need is certainly a lot greater. Yeah, it's a foul. Uh, Matazzo, Barron tries to go through the man to win the ball. Holds him to the ground. Referee quite right there. So Arnie Engels again over the set piece. Ops for the short one. For Fana into Oligbe. It was Lewis Nielsen, it was Aidan Denham there doing well. He didn't jump in. Yeah, I winced slightly because I thought that's exactly what he was going to do. But good composure and good presence of thought to stay on his feet and nick the ball back. We've got a better view of this here, but it was obviously a worked free kick. But good, decisive play by the young Scott, making his debut from the bench tonight. And there he is involved again, knocking on to Doak. Bowie, King, wants to go back to Slicker, who had that fantastic save on that corner kick ten minutes or so ago. Now Adam Devine on this left side. We did say earlier that he had to play on the left, the predominantly right-footed player uh, last season for Rangers when he was covering Barisic's uh, injury. I think there will come a time for Adam Devine where he needs to make the decision to get out and play and I don't think there will be a shortage of clubs who would happily take him on board for a season. Just that one appearance this season in the League Cup win against Morton back in August. 
Slicker comes all the way out, but he's not going to get there. He needs to get retrace his steps and get back on his line. The defence do enough to allow him to do so, but the danger not over for Scotland as Engels plays it wide to Hugo Sique. His delivery to the back post, and Devine was there to make sure that Elliot Matazzo was unable to take any advantage. Well, decision-making there, maybe he just has to be careful. The goalkeeper thought he was going to get there, but he had to get back and scramble onto his line again. Yeah, he did, but he recognised his mistake. Again, quite often players don't, at that age, have the presence of mind you know, to realise their mistake and try and get back into the position. You would have seen a lot of goalkeepers come out and just accept it and foul the player and bring him down. He didn't do that. Did get away with one slightly, but you know he's got out of Manchester City slacker. He's joined Ipswich Town. Okay, he's playing in the cup at the moment, not the league games. Ipswich are flying. He just need to bide his time and hope. He hopefully, he gets in at some point and starts to build his career up. Yeah, two EFL Cup appearances this season for Ipswich. And he might be called into action here again. Sardella. Belgium have options in the box. Stroikens here. And the opportunity for Matazzo, and there is the goalkeeper making a fantastic save, although the flag was up. But he didn't know that. No, he didn't. And that is a marvellous save, you have to say. Even better than the first he made from the deflection on the corner. My first instinct was he, he was offside. But, oh, it's tight. I don't actually think he was on second viewing, Matazzo. But that's a wonderful save. Talk about being off your line quick. Don't give the striker a chance to lift his head. Gets his shot away pretty quickly, but Slicker was very slick and off his line there, look. Fantastic save. And that is why Scotland lead 2-0, because the goalkeeper's pulled off two fantastic saves, where his opposite number, on the other hand, Martin van der Voort, will be disappointed, certainly with his involvement in that second goal. And, and as you said earlier, he's got plenty of experience. He's won the Belgian Cup. He actually, uh, for Genk, uh, they beat Standard Liège in the final when Hugo Sique, the man on the ball just now, was uh, playing for Standard Liège. So um, it just shows that you can have all the experience, but you need to make sure you do the business. And Slicker is doing that, whereas Van der Voort hasn't done that so far. Is Scotland happy to allow Belgium time on the ball? The shape is working just now so far. Remember, Scotland have had to make that change with uh, Matthew Anderson going off injured, Aidan Denham on, and it means that Adam Devine's gone out to the left. Well, Scotland were defensively sound in the main against Spain in the opener, and it was 10 minutes to go when Turayentes, the Atletico Madrid man, scored a from the corner kick and that was unfortunate because there were plenty of positives to come from that game Yusuf Silla Nielsen doing well Belgium still have possession though Engels shields the ball well Sardella now can Oleg be get a shot away he can but it goes well wide and again, good defensive play by Scotland. Yeah, and Yusuf Silla's moaning um, that there's too much contact from Lewis Nielsen. I've got to disagree with him. I think he does really well. We're going to see the replay now of the shot. Um, but I have to say, the three centre-backs of Scotland, Nielsen, Bowett and Mullen, you know, they're big lads and they're not giving Belgium any time or space when it's clipped into the front men to take the ball in. And they're not enjoying it, the Belgians. Oh, Mullen... Just losing possession. It gives Belgium a chance again. As the captain goes from range. I think it was going wide, but Slicker gathered the ball in any case. Yeah, and once again, Scotland game will be more than happy with that. A shot from a long way out. It's the third one of the match. And teams, when they start to get frustrated and they see no joy, start to shoot from range. And it's a sign that you're defending well. Positive so far from Scotland as it's nodded on looking for Doak. Well, Scotland playing Belgium away this evening and then it's a trip to Budapest on Tuesday. 
when they play Hungary in under-21 qualifying. It will also be live on YouTube on the Scottish FA channel, the national team channel, so make sure you join us for that one. And certainly if Scotland could get a win here, it really becomes even more important to keep that momentum going. Nielsen with the back flick to get it forward. Cameron, great turn by Doak. What can he do now? Doak with up against two defenders. He's looking to work the space. And Lyson just did enough to take it away from him there. The initial turn was beautiful to watch. Took the defender right out the game. Lyson, he did recover in time. But Ben Doak, a constant threat. Well, Spillers and Sardella had to try and stop him getting forward as Silla goes down there far too easily looking for the free kick maybe a slight sign of desperation so far because in this first half it's just not happened for our hosts from Belgium well you put Ben Doak when there was a clear hand in the back and a push I said it's not enough for a penalty whilst you were previewing the, the Hungary game there um, on Tuesday Olegbe went down under no pressure fell to the ground wanted a free kick I can't quite understand why the referee's been so lenient on the simulation because Leyson had won earlier in the game on Belgium yet has chosen to book Doak, book Doak at the first time of asking. Bowett's throw. Bowie to Doak. Now Devine. King. Barron can't get in there. There was a late challenge. You could hear the scream there from Arna Engels. Plays his football in Augsburg. Just caught late there, I think, by Barron. Yeah, not quite as high and wild as Bowitz won previously, but still a foul all the same. O'Connor Barron. He's uh, had different emotions playing in that game against. Pauk Salonika and getting a result over in Greece and then playing at Celtic Park and losing heavily at the weekend with Aberdeen. So you want that out of his system and here he is in possession again. Just put off his stride there, looking for the free kick, not given. Belgium want to get underway again quickly. Their need is greater just now. Sardella hits off Cameron. Slicker can blast forward but it's not the best of balls and Arna Engels picks up Engels scored against Malta earlier in the group but the other three Belgian goals in this campaign have been scored by Kazim Olikbe and here he is in possession Adam Denham and Leo Cameron doubling up lovely play there by Barron the captain for Scotland Cameron cuts inside and gets the free kick Lovely feet again, he's doing a power of work for the team off the ball, Lyle Cameron. He really is, covering a lot of ground, deservedly gets his goal. This little jink inside, buying his team a little bit of time to get up the pitch and build from the back. Well, he scored once for Dundee this season. It was on the opening day of the Scottish Premiership with that goal against Motherwell. Maybe he's under-21 debut back in June. King, Devine, his club and international team. Bowett. He's also playing his football in Austria, just now on loan from Fulham. Devine. Just can't keep it in there. Crucial period of the game coming up here, look. Need to get in at half time at 2 0. You imagine there will be some stoppage time given the substitution for the injury to Matthew Anderson and also the Belgian captain Elliot Tazo required treatment after that challenge by Ibn Bowett. Scotland doing well enough so far. Fantastic first half. The scoreline 2 0 to Scotland, remember. Mullen with that goal in 12 minutes, doubled by Cameron on the half hour mark. Feed a license now. Plays it to Jorna Spillers. Credit to Scott Gemmell as well. He's, act he's actually changed it to a, effectively a 5-4-1 at times and it's worked a lot better since since he's done that. Define doing well to stop CK playing the ball inside. 
Majority of players in the Scotland half as Belgium look to try and pull one back before half time. As Rory said, a key period in this game. Jonas Spillers out to Hugo Sique, and he can certainly deliver a good ball in. Cleared by Nielsen, though. Now Arna Engels. Scotland doing well and working hard to frustrate the Belgians. They keep possession, but Scotland are comfortable with that. Lyson goes with the diagonal ball. Devine will have to see that one out, which he does. Just. Scotland will be content with the goal kick at this stage. Yeah, we'll take that for sure. And Arne Engels is staring at his centre back, Lyson for shelling out the pitch when he felt the pass could have been a lot better. But good defending again from Scotland, forcing the mistakes. Well, Dok unlucky there. Need to keep possession. Devine. Bowett. Don't know if you saw Silla there, but Slicker does the needful. To stoppage time now. Looks as if the offside flag was up. Well, they're doing a lot of running, they've got them players off the ball. That running becomes an awful lot easier when you're 2 0 up. That adrenaline. Their performance defensively has been pretty immaculate after the first 10 minutes. You complement that with the quality of the two goals, and it makes a perfect performance so far. Here's Doak. Starting to go back outside there, and Kelly and Sardella did enough. Still looking to see out this half, though, still with their two goal lead intact. It's Belgium forced to go long, but like they controls well enough. Up against Aidan Denham coming inside. Cameron can't stop him. Will he have the opportunity here? It's wild, it's high, and it's well over the bar. He gets pushed back in the pitch. Lyle Cameron does well. Ball actually bobbles a couple of times. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing him a favour of Legby, but it does seem to bobble up as he goes for power rather than finesse. Catches it all wrong and ends up in row's head, as they say. Well, Gilles Spertz will have to think what he does in the second half because Scotland are in a commanding position now as another Belgian goes to the ground rather easily. Bow it. Uh, it was there, and Bow it, rather wins the free kick so Scotland might just have a set piece opportunity to end this first half that's lovely feet by Bowie it's almost a Cruyff on the move we're into the final minute of the three that's being added here I would throw this right on top of the goalkeeper I'd get everybody forward I really would I know that sounds risky given the time of the game but given the mistakes he's made go for and a third and get that he does well to make sure it doesn't roll out and still give Scotland the opportunity here. Now Cameron. Ball just rolls out there. I think he was too busy battling with Killian Sardella to keep the ball in. He's obviously happy, Scott Gemmel, with 2-0. He just wants to get to half time. Aidan Denham, Cameron getting got in his way there, but Connor Barron, Scotland just content to keep possession. Cameron, partially cleared, King comes in as the half time whistle sounds in Belgium. Fantastic first half for Scotland, and that scoreline tells the story. Belgium nil, Scotland two, and very briefly, Rory, your first half thoughts. Well, it was going to be a difficult game. We set up with a lot of men behind the ball and we were going to use Ben Doak as our outlet and it's worked perfectly so far. Belgium, guilty of a lot of unforced errors. Scotland have defended well also and have been absolutely ruthless with the chances that pre have presented themselves. So, you know, an unbelievable start, but we're only halfway, 45 minutes in, and I'm sure Scott Gemmel will be warning them of complacency for the second half look. And make sure you join us for the second half. But uh, before that, we'll look back at Scotland's last match in under-21 qualifying. That was the 2-1 win 
over Malta back on the 17th of October when uh, Lowry and Bowie were amongst the goal scorers. Let's look at that now and join us for the second half. Anderson. Forward to Kieran Bowie. Back to Anderson. Really good play, and the referee points to the spot, and Scotland have a penalty. The Hearts man on loan from Rangers will step up to take. And no worries at all for Alex Lowry, who sends the goalkeeper the wrong way and puts Scotland 1-0 up. Yeah, he wasn't nervous one bit there, was he? He knew, he knew exactly what he was doing, waiting for the goalkeeper to dive in. And sorted at another corner. Pops up all over the place, Josh Mulligan. Into the box, to the byline. He's got a real chance here. And eventually, somehow, Malta keep that one out for a second. It looked as if it might cross the line. Yeah, that was really unlucky with Mulligan there. He did really well driving the players in the box. And I don't really know what happened, but it, it, it was unlucky not to get the shot away. All three centre-backs up from the back. One of them's Liam Morrison, and he forces a good save out of Hugo Sacco. Barron's delivery goes towards the back post. Mullen. Goes down, isn't claiming for anything. And there's the strike, and it's beaten away by Sacco, but a really good effort. Yeah, he did really well there, Mullen. He, he sort of lost his foot and then just got that nick away and he, into Bowie, which is, um, and then, as you say, on his left foot, you fancy Bowie for there as well. Had a good strike and another good save from the goal. Bowie forward for Alex Lowry. And it's cut back for Josh Mulligan. That is a wonderful save. And Malta just trying to get this one away. They eventually do. But the save from Hugo Sacco was really good to stop Scotland getting a second. And eventually Malta cleared. They're now looking to do something of their own in the Scotland box. Zamet. And a penalty to Malta. chance this is for the visitors steps up and that is calm from Andrea Zamet and just look at the celebrations from the Malta players they know how big that goal is and they are back level against Scotland Mikalev and Zama, it's a nice play between the two of them and what a strike that is by Mikalev that comes off the bar. More of a toe poke technique than anything else. Nice run from Mulligan, there's Lowry, inventive with the flick. And Mulligan over to Michael Mellon. Does keep it in Michael Mellon. And Scotland all oh, so close to going ahead. Yeah, he starts with Mulligan there, it was great play, sort of driving into the middle of the park and a great ball. Mulligan, who's adapted well to switching to right back, and here he is again, a marauding run into the box. Will he go for goal himself? It's cut back, and Scotland do get the goal! And it's Kieran Bowie, his fourth at under-21 level, three in the last two games. It came from really nice play from Josh Mulligan. You wondered whether Michael Mellon was going to get the touch, but once it came to Kieran Bowie, there was only one thought on his mind. He was going for goal, and clinical again from Kieran Bowie. Skiberis to deliver, and it is a free header, and it comes off the top of the bar. Scotland get away with one. Mattia Veselai, head in his hands. He felt he maybe should have scored. Confident play from Slicker as well to come and gather, but that is the full-time whistle here at Fir Park. It maybe wasn't 
as straightforward and as slick as Scott Gable would have wanted. However, the main thing is Scotland get all three points. Well, it's been a great first half for Scotland over in Belgium. And it all started in uh, the match early in the 12th minute when Scotland got ahead, but that was down to this uh, Ben Doak press here, uh, making sure he didn't give up on this loose ball, Rory, to win Scotland the corner. No, exactly that. And that's what he's up there to do. Johan Spielers gets himself in a mess. He comes through, puts pressure on the goalkeeper, an experienced goalkeeper who fluffs his lines, leads to the corner. It's a beautiful ball in from Devine, I have to say. The ball bubbles up and ruins his first touch. He actually looks up and spots the run. And it's a wonderful header, it must be said, from Mullen, who finds the back of the net, gets the run on the defenders, who are flat-footed. The cover and full-back can't get round. Sequet, Scotland go one up. Well, he's eight cap tonight, his first goal, the Leeds United man. You can see his eyes lighting up there when that ball came in right on his head but of course for Scotland they had to make sure that they were strong at the back and this is when you call on your goalkeeper yeah Sikwe's not picked up I'm not quite sure what's happened there but it gets through the last well, all the lines of defence other than the last one Kieran Slicker very agile on his toes to get himself across the goal and palm it out away from danger really good goalkeeping it has to be said he also had to make sure it didn't hit off Lyle Cameron as uh, he was forcing that one away. Cameron did well. And of course, he did well here as well because he doubled Scotland's lead on the half hour mark after slack play by Van der Voort in goal, but a great finish. It was. And, you know, he looked like a natural striker there, Lyle Cameron, which he isn't. He uses his body really, really well um, to shield the defender and then spin and knock it into the back of the net. Good first time pass by Barron. I actually think it was initially meant for Cameron. Finds its way to Doak. Doak with a beautiful disguised pass. Good first touch. Lifts his head. Slots it home. 2 0 Scotland. Yeah, and the goalkeeper, he certainly acknowledged the fact that he knew he had made the error there. And it gives Belgium a, certainly a, a tough second half now, given that you look at the three games they've played so far. 1-0 against Kazakhstan, 2-0 against Malta, 1-0 against Hungary. So they're not scoring lots of goals. Hopefully that's not famous last words. But they didn't score here because, yet again, the goalkeeper uh, off his line quickly. Although the offside flag went up, we'll see in a minute, it was tight. So uh, good goalkeeping in any case. Yes, it was. He was off his line incredibly quickly. You know, as a striker, you want the opportunity to lift your head and try and find a corner. He wasn't given time to do that. Slicker was out, right out at his feet. I think it's actually an incorrect decision. And Matazzo, before he knows it, he's got a goalkeeper breathing down his neck. Really good save, although he doesn't know the, the flags up and keeps Scotland's 2-0 lead intact, which could be crucial come the end of the match. Well, not long to wait for the second half. Make sure you're settled and we'll be back shortly for the second half of Belgium against Scotland.
Thomas Buffel, ja, uh, boven hebben we er nog eens naar gekeken naar de beelden. Maar hoe is het eigenlijk gesteld met het onderbeen van Elliot? Het is wel wat gehavend, maar hij kan veilig spelen. Hoe moet je in de tweede helft uh, iets veranderen? Hebben we alles onder controle, alleen die, die, die decisive balls. Welcome back, a big 45 minutes ahead for Scotland. They have done so well in that first half, getting that two goal lead thanks to Jeremiah Mullen and Lyle Cameron. Can they build on that or at least keep what they've got and go home with the three points? Rory, when you look at this now, is it sticker twist for Scotland? Through the middle in this second half. Ben Doak out on the right. There was an issue with my mic there. I was just saying it's difficult for Scott Gamble to decide what he's going to do. You know, do you try and push for a third, which means you're not defending your box for 45 minutes, or do you do exactly that and try and see the lead out? Uh, be interesting to see how they do, but I still think they've got major threats up the top end of the pitch. And that is the bonus for Scott Gamble in Scotland. But they need to be defensively sound and solid, which they have been so far. As Engels now looking to start a move as CK involved here on this near side. Mario Stroikens. Lyson chipping it forward. Scotland do enough though. Well done by Connor Barron to win back possession. The two captains going head to head there. It was the Scotland one that came off the better. Trying to get Doak involved up that right hand side. Just unlucky. See, that's the thing with Ben Doak. You know, Connor Barron can actually put way more on that and he'll catch it. You know, you want him to be in a foot race. You don't need to find his feet. You just need to lift that slightly higher. Silla's cross blocked by Nielsen, so it's a corner kick and an early test for the Scotland defence. Links up Lyson coming up from the back along with Jorna Spillers. Siki delivers a corner kick, the header blocked on the front edge of the six yard box and cleared there by Scotland. That could have gone anywhere. As Fafana's tripped by Bowie, and it will be a free kick to Belgium. Yeah, bit of a striker's challenge that. It'll be slightly concerning that Belgium got a free header once again in the box from a corner. Well, this is Fafana going down, clipped there by Kieran Bowie. The man. Yeah, I mean, there's nobody anywhere near him, so it's even difficult to know who's picking Arnie and goes up. Engels with the free kick. Bowie can get that one clear. The man playing with Northampton Town on loan from Fulham as well. Belgium looking to keep the pressure on. They'll feel if they can get one, 
it will really make Scotland think about this second half. Spillers out to Fafana, looking to go up against Devine. He's trying to stick to his task, but Fafana gets the ball into the box, a downward header, and Slicker has to punch it away. Yeah, it's a comfortable save in the end. It was just slightly awkward the way it hits the ground. Belgium have started this second half pretty well. Fafana with the ball in. The header's a decent one into the ground. You're always taught to head the ball into the ground. It's the captain again getting forward. Matazzo. Slicker does enough. They'll need to defend these slightly better than they have been. CK with the corner kick away by Leon King. Only as far as Sardella, but the shot's blocked. Doak coming back to help out. Now Barron looking to play it forward for Doak, but the free kick's given against Scotland here. Handball, says the referee, Marek Rudina from the Czech Republic. I didn't quite see that, but it must have happened. There wasn't a lot of arguing by the Scotland players, but you touched on it earlier, Luke. Sequay's delivery into the box is really, really good. Every single one, I think, that he's had the opportunity to put into the box has been right on the money. King can clear, Bowie looking to give chase, three goals in the last two games for Scotland but he's not really been able to pose a threat going forward but certainly working for the team tonight, the Stroikens out to Likebay, the ball in blocked by Mullen, now Stroikens again, the man playing his football with Anderlecht, Likebay with the cross, Far too much on that one. Yeah, it was well over hit, wasn't it? It's an interesting wee tweak to the personnel, the position to have Ben Doak out on the right now, whether it's to give Lyle Cameron a little bit of a, a breather in terms of the work that he has to do and ask Doak to do that for 15, 20 minutes, I'm not quite sure, or, or they want deep, uh, Doak slightly deeper to get the chance to get him on the ball and run it in the Belgian back line. Gilles Spertz with his assistant Thomas Buffel, known to some Scottish audiences for his spell with Rangers. Evan Bowett. Frida Lyson. There's Jonas Spillers. Hugo Siki. Out to Lyson again. Scotland again, proving difficult to break down. Lyson now with the ball. There's Mullen going to engage and winning that ball there to knock it out for the throw. Really good anticipation from Mullen. Spots the danger. The ball's dropped into the space just in front of him. Puts good pressure on the ball. So Arna Engels. He scored against Malta. The 2 0 win on match day two. Well, Bowie doing the hard work, as we said, at the back today. Getting back to make sure that he helps out the defence. Cameron wins the header and wins the free kick too. Yeah, the work rate of the forward players is, is critical and it's really stood out just how much effort they're putting in to go back and help the defence. Yeah, that is a foul. Don't see any intent there, and doesn't catch him, but certainly a foul. What will Scott, be, Scott Gem will be thinking just now? I think he'll be quite happy with how the second half started. Yes, they've given up a lot of possession, as you'd expect, but I think he'll be slightly concerned at the opportunities Belgium are getting from set pieces, but be delighted at how good Scotland have been from open play in terms of their defensive organisation. I think Bow and Mullen, either side and Nielsen, have all been outstanding so far in keeping Fofana and Sila quiet. There is experience in this Belgian team, but there's also a lot of new players coming through after the previous qualifying group, which Scotland were also in. And Belgium won 2-0 at Tannadice. Nicola Raskan, one of the goal scorers, then a 0-0 draw a year and a half ago. 
as Hugo Siki in on the right hand side low ball across but again good defending by Scotland but it is a corner takes up a really good position there Conor Barron he senses the danger and gets back to help it's Kieran Bowie just switches off slightly maybe not natural to him he works hard but maybe caught out there a little bit by the run of Siki Conor Barron spots it and deals with it another set piece opportunity Again, Scotland do enough. Matazzo, the captain. Playing his football in Lagoon with Monaco. Kenyon Cameron looking to stop Fafana, who's gone to this left hand side just now. Mullen and Cameron goes to the ground. Bowie boots it clear. No real out for Scotland just now. I was mentioning Belgium, uh, they topped Scotland's group. Last time out, they had six wins and two draws, including that nil-nil against Scotland. But when they got to the tournament, it wasn't the best. Scotland get the goal kick, but uh, they finished bottom of their group. Georgia, one of the hosts, Portugal and Netherlands, all finished above them. They would have been disappointed with how they got on, but they'll be looking to get back to the finals again in Slovakia in 2025. It's a 16-team tournament. The top team in each group qualify along with the three best second place teams, but the other second place teams will enter the playoffs. So there's certainly opportunity, especially if Scotland can get a big win here tonight. I know it's still early in the group, but this would be a, a big victory to really set the tone. Yeah, well, I said at the start of the game that I didn't think Belgium were quite strong this year. You know, they're in a transitional phase. They've got a few 18-year-olds playing. Last year at Tannadice in the 2-0 game, they were phenomenal. They really were. Lopenda is the star man. The late break striker who's taken the Bundesliga by storm this season. So it's a massive opportunity, and with Spain in the group, you would, you would imagine that these head to heads against Belgium will be critical. And two of Spain's next three games are against Spain. They're at home, then they play against Malta, then it's another game against Spain. So Scotland just a couple of games coming up, Hungary next week, and then it's a game against Kazakhstan in March. So big games to come for Scotland, but if they can win tonight and win away in Hungary, then they are certainly well in with a shout going in yeah. to next year. And they've already beaten Hungary in the group at home. They were 2 0 up within 10 minutes. Kieran Bowie netted a rapid double, and Ben Doak added to that in a 3 1 win. Momentum so key, and given that. There's absentees and players have been promoted to the A squad or out injured, etc. Then it's very difficult to sometimes get that momentum and get that rhythm. But if Scotland can certainly build it as they did in the last double header last month. Then they've got a chance. For the second half, it's really been all Belgium in possession, but again, Scotland just trying to frustrate them. But it takes a lot of concentration, a lot of effort. As we said at the top of the second half, it's a stick or twist for Scotland. It's very much stick just now. But you wouldn't rule them out getting something on the break with Doak's pace. CK with a good low disguise ball. Engels going for the drive. And Slicker can gather at the second attempt. Yeah, credit with Stu. That's a wonderful move by Belgium. A series of passes before CK fires it in to Sila. It's a good layoff. And Arnie Engels is not shy of shooting. But Slicker equal to it again. Is that something Belgium need to do more? Move it quicker? When you just be content with possession? Yeah, when you're playing against what would need to be considered now, Scotland come forward again. Bowie, just a poor touch there because it's actually a well worked move and he had Cameron and Devine in support. It's unfortunate there. Sorry, Rody, you were saying. No, that's quite alright. Um, I think when you're playing against what would need to be described now as a low block, you know, Barron and King. We're playing with a back five, Barron and King, the holding midfielders are, are getting closer and closer to the three centre-backs by the minute. And then you've got the front three very deep as well. You need to move the ball quickly from side to side. And they were doing that at times in the first half when Engels was shooting as they come forward again. Well, the ball across, Slicker got something on that. Danger not over, good block by Mullen. It's more up than out though. Bowick can't get anything on it, did Engels control that with a hand for Fana's low ball across this time King is there Bowie with the header out but Scotland still under pressure as we approach the hour mark 
Stroikens playing the one two Oleg Bai getting in his way and Slicker has the ball gratefully in his arms with a Scotland man down yeah it's a really good floated ball in and it was the two strikers who linked up Fafana and Tasila and it finds its way out he's had an unbelievable amount of shots tonight Arnie Engels and it gets blocked it's good defending in the end they're throwing themselves in front of things the Scotland defenders but it's slightly uncomfortable isn't it they're relying a little bit on luck where the ball lands as they make a change now And it looks to be Finn Robertson coming on for Ben Doak. The Dundee man replaces the Liverpool player. Yeah, you can't help but feel he's maybe picked up a little knock. He's moved out wide. Seems to be moving overly freely. It's a real shame to see him go off because he was an outlet. He really was. Doak wasn't a recognised striker. We certainly don't have a recognised striker on, on the part now. Oh, a double change getting prepared for Belgium as well. Looks like Samuel Abangula and Marco Canna about to come on. It's interesting to see what they're about to do as we approach the hour mark. So Finn Robertson on for Scotland. And here's his Dundee teammate. Lyle Cameron, the man that got Scotland second there, linking up there on that right-hand side. Connor Barron in an offside position, and it'll be a free kick to Belgium. I think Scotland have shown up really well technically tonight. Lyle Cameron, wonderful touch. And just as I was saying, he's getting closer and closer to his centre-backs. Connor Barron finds himself getting caught offside. <laughs> Mullen, the man that started it off for Scotland on 12 minutes in possession. Ibn Bowett who made his Scotland debut a year ago today against Iceland. And Bowie just couldn't retain possession there. And Robertson is on now for Ben Doak, and that's his first cap. So a couple of debutants tonight in Robertson and Denham, who had to come on in the first half for the injury to Matthew Anderson. The leg be shown Denham a clean pair of heels a couple of times, but overall he's done well. He's got the better of him there, and he might have a shooting opportunity. Goes to Stroikens instead, and Bowett blocks, it's a corner. Good block, it must be said. It's a really good turn in terms of Adam Denham. Oh, that's a fantastic block, and then lead to defend another corner here, Scotland. 61 minutes and the effort's been fantastic for Scotland but so is the concentration it's something that they're going to have to continue with for the final half an hour of the game, tough though it may be, but this would be a huge win for Scotland CK to deliver away at the near post by Bowie CK again to loft it in the header from Lyson easy for Slicker yeah, I don't know why his teammate Allegby's not screaming at him because it looked a much easier head up for himself than it did for Layson. But the delivery again from CK, the first one was poor, it has to be said, the corner comes back out to him. It's a fantastic ball in, really, really good. Hugo CK uh, has been delivering good balls tonight. On loan at Circle Bruges. What a what a boost it would be, sorry, look, to, to go over to Hungary uh, on Tuesday with three points in the bag here. I just hope Ben Doak hasn't picked up an injury um, and he's going to be fit and available for Tuesday nights. Maybe in Scott Gamble's mind if he has picked up a little strain to get him off the pitch and get him wrapped in cotton wool. Good refereeing there. The Siki went to ground rather easily. The referee said play on. But yeah, we hope Doak's OK. He was on a booking and maybe... Scott Gemmel thinking ahead about fresh legs and maybe thinking about Tuesday, but certainly relatively early in the second half to take him off. We'll find out about that later on, no doubt, as Mullen has to try and head clear. King as well. It would surprise me if it was tactical. It really would. Given his contribution or his potential contribution, it would be. And the makeup of the game. I think he's an unbelievable outlet for Scotland who are going to be under a lot of pressure on this second half so fingers crossed it is tactical look Barron trying to get it away it was given away by Bowie initially Bowie 
Belgium looking to build again. Fafana's cross. The header blocked by Mullen. Siki shot. Nielsen blocks it at the front edge of the six yard box. And Scotland look to get it away with Bowie here. Well, again, Scotland having to defend. Superb. Bit of rest bank just now. Mullen has possession. Nielsen. Well, Nielsen certainly has experience of big games he played in the Conference League with Hearts last season although he won't want to be reminded of the fact he was sent off against Fiorentina at Tencastle Park on loan in the Championship with Partick Thistle this season I spoke a minute ago look about you know I think technically we've shown up well tonight what a wonderful touch by by Bowie into the presence of mind under pressure to pick out Lyle Cameron he batters the ball into him and then the first touch is amazing from Lyle Cameron as well Fafana now Stroikens Matazzo going for goal well wide well here is that double change that we mentioned so Marco Canna is coming on as we see this uh, opportunity again from the captain Matazzo but Fafana is somebody that fits and starts tonight has proved dangerous yeah, he's flattered to deceive, to deceive at times. That was a good delivery on that occasion. And he had another one into his strike partner just before that sealer. But I don't think he's done enough to argue with the fact he's been subbed after 65 minutes. He needs a change. Well, the captain is going off. That was his last involvement in the game with that shot. And he's been replaced by Marco Canna. We also have Sam Mbangula coming on for Fafana. So again the two players involved there um, that we saw from the replay now off the field as Siki takes on the captain's armband Kieran uh, Bowie for Scotland Cameron racing forward what options does Scotland have though he could win the corner though he does Scotland up the right end of the field it's not been often that's happened in the second half so a good set piece opportunity Yes, indeed, and it was a lovely deft touch by Adam Devine around the corner to Kieran Bowie. He takes a good touch and feeds in Lyle Cameron. Gets slightly fortunate that they've got a corner out of it, but Belgium have looked suspect at times from these dead balls. Looks as if it'll be Cameron to take this one. And it goes away by CK at the front post. The man with the captain's armband now for Belgium. Devine. Denham. Mullen Baron robbed of possession after a good challenge by Arna Ingalls first involvement for Marco Canna and Finn Robertson doing well to Stop Sardella's charge, but the pressure still on for Scotland. Bangula, here he is, his first real involvement since coming on. Scotland trying to stop the cross. Sardella. Arna Engels looking to create craft. It's away by Nielsen, but again, Scotland. Are watching the ball just coming right back at them and it's a free header that Slickers had to tip over the bar after Engels uh, rather Stroikens with the header there but the Scotland goalkeeper aware of the danger yeah, the Scotland players getting dragged all over the pitch there Kieran Bowie ends up going from left all the way to the right hand side it means that it's difficult to know who's meant to be where in terms of picking up and they get away with that when he can't generate enough power Stroikens to trouble the goalkeeper fully does get a corner lovely feet as well must be said by Strykens. Hopefully back heel by Engels initially, but here he is about to take the corner kick. Engels flights it in. Away at the front post by Scotland. Finn Robertson has to work hard against Canna there. Barron looking to get it down, and Robertson, he's got his Dundee teammate, Lyle Cameron, in front of him to help out. The man that scored Scotland's second goal. Scotland going forward, Barron looking to get into the area. 
Allen shielding possession. And he's lost it. Chance for Lyson to clear under pressure though from Cameron, just trying hard to win back possession. I don't think he was sure of the options that he had forward as he was forced wide. Yeah, I think he was slightly concerned that Finn Robertson had a number of bodies around him. Now, you need to trust your teammates. However, he chose at that particular time to take the ball forward himself, but it's been an absolute standout tonight, Leo Cameron. Bowie doing well for Scotland there to get possession and get the throw in. What will Gilles Spertz be thinking now uh, about what he does? Because he's, he's made the change. Scotland still holding out. Yeah, I think he'll be thinking not far away from what you mentioned not so long ago in that if Belgium can get one, you know, Scotland become a bit nervous, a bit ropey, and hopefully can go on and get a second. It's how they do that. At times they have moved the ball quickly and created chances, but in the main, Scotland have looked you know, pretty comfortable given the amount of possession Belgium have had. Belgium might be making another change. Romeo Vermant is the man who stripped just now. There's another change on the way potentially. Scotland calling for offside. They're going to have to defend this cross here. As it comes in, Slickers missed it. It goes all the way out and it will be a corner kick. Well, the danger there for Scotland, nobody could get on the end of it from either team. Yeah. Well, Yusuf Sila, should, that should be meat and drink across that front post when the ball is up in the corner like that. It really should be. And it goes exactly where you would want it to go as a striker when he's not alive and he doesn't get on the end of it. They do get a corner out of it, but that should have been a goal in my opinion. I don't know who in a white jersey touched that one, but it's CK to deliver again. And yet again, uh, it's Adam Denham this time. It's a Scotland jersey that heads clear. Barron back to help out Devine. Poor touch by Mbangula, and it's allowed Scotland to go on the chase on the left-hand side. Finn Robertson unlucky there. Well, do you think that Scott Gemmell thinks about any more potential changes, or will he be happy with what he's getting just now? I'll be surprised if um, Lyle Cameron and uh, Kieran Bowie last the 90 minutes. I think they've put so much into the game. The mental fatigue, physical fatigue may start to set in. Uh, so I, I don't think any of the back five will change. I don't think Leon King and Conor Barron necessarily will change, but I would be surprised if uh, Bowie and Cameron lasted the 90 minutes. Marco Canna, his second half sub. Mario Stroikens. Oh, and again, he's won just about every header so far this evening for Scotland and he's also won the header in the opposition box to put Scotland ahead with that goal in the 12th minute but he'll be called into action again and it's Bowett that gets something on that one yet again another corner for Scotland to defend yeah they've rode the luck at times but in the main they've been fantastic in the back three Nielsen, Bowett and Mullen have seen it a few times they've snuffed out danger they've been brave they've put their head in well, the substitution about to happen, it's Mario Stroikens, a man who plays for Anderlecht, who will be replaced by Romeo Vermant. But just looking at the stats, Scotland have had two attempts on goal. They've scored both of them. 12 for Belgium. They haven't been able to make the breakthrough. This is their 10th corner of the game. Flighted in by Engels. Again, Scotland get it away. I think it was Bowie this time. Fantastic stuff, but the danger is not over as Mbangula gets it in. Scotland get enough on that. Devine couldn't get there before Engels and a strong, robust challenge that Scotland win the free kick. Bowie didn't pull out of that one. Romeo for Matt just on, unhappy. Take a look at this. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a foul to anybody. I think it's a Belgium throw. I think he's a little bit, you know, we'll take it. Absolutely, we'll take it. But I don't think there was much in it. Kieran Bowie doing his work defensively again, though, very, very well. Good old fashioned 50 50, that. Yeah, very much so. I think they'd be raging if that went against us. Anyway, we'll take the free kick. And it's slicker to blast forward. Bowie, lovely feet. Oh, And again. As Cameron goes down and wins a free kick. Could you ever do that? 
Absolutely not. Uh, I could. <laughs> I wasn't blessed with as much natural talent as that. I have to say. Um, but the feet and the sway of the body movement. Even my eyes were going the wrong way. That is fantastic to watch. Uh, he's been excellent tonight as well. Himself and Cameron have been really, really good to watch. He's on loan at Northampton Town for from Fulham, Kieran Bowie, and you can see why Fulham are holding on to him and sending him out on loan. Well, three goals for the 21s this season. Yet to score for Northampton, although he did get a red card against Leighton Orient last month. Five goals there last season. Divine throw. Bowie involved again. He was just unlucky that time. And Van der Voort uh, has not had much to do, but he has had to pick the ball out of the net twice. One of them certainly his fault. The second one with a passing out from the back. Good play by Barron to get in there first. Back in the half hour mark, but Scotland still have that two goal lead with just over 15 minutes to play. Yusuf Silla, Hugo Siki. Jorna Spillers, Frida Lyson. What can Belgium do here? Scotland go to double up. And the two subs combining really well there. Finn Robertson and then Aidan Denham in particular, making sure that Samuel Mbangula didn't get the cross in. Yeah, and it goes all the way back to Bowett. It actually looked there was a dangerous situation developing down Scotland's left hand side. And Bowett just shepherds the player out to the touchline. They end up recycling the ball, Belgium. All of a sudden, the ball's in front of Scotland again, and they defend superbly well to see it out and they end up getting the goal kick. Really, really good play. Define keeps that one in. Barron, Define does well again. Asking too much to do it a third time. Scotland with a two goal lead can they hang on to it can they get over the line and get the three points before they head to Hungary on Tuesday it's going to be a free kick the ref's calling this one back Finn Robertson it looks like was the man going in there on Samuel Mbangula I do feel as though the referee you know should have booked a couple of Belgian players in the first half for simulation but I have to say overall I think he's had a very, very good game, Marek Vadina. CK's ball in. Mullen didn't get that one. There's a chance on here for Vermont. How has he missed that one? A great opportunity for the Belgians to pull one back and put Scotland under pressure. They failed to do so. Yeah, they do. It's a really bad miss. Oh, he's got to do better catches the outside of his ankle and flies over Vermont will be I was going to say ruin his luck it won't be as, as lucky as ruin it'll be his lack of composure in Scotland sometimes touch wood you just feel it's your night because that should have been in the back of the net what a miss and what a big moment in this game it's a good ball the offside flag going up that time as uh, Arna Engels getting in. So an offside position. Look tight, I have to say. Interesting to see again. Well, like Bain is the man going off here. Another change for Belgium. It's Lucas Stassen coming on, going off there, uh, Killian Sardella, and also two Romans coming on. So another couple of changes for Gilles Sferts. Last throw of the dice for the Belgians. Cameron, what a tower of work he's put in here, divine. Cameron just didn't read that one. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication, a misunderstanding there. They'll get back in, I'm sure. So, like being Sardella off with Romans and Stassens coming on. It's 
Scotland have options on the bench, but it's whether Scott Gale feels he needs to make any changes at the minute, given how well it's going. CK now, again playing the ball in, Ibn Bowick taking no prisoners, lofting that clear. Yeah, I think that's just a bit of fatigue setting in, because I think in the first half he takes a touch there. Barron, CK getting back well, Bowie wanted it down that left-hand side to run onto. And that is the worry with uh, 11 minutes to go. Scotland doing so well just now, but it just takes one slip, and we saw uh, Romeo Vermant getting in when he probably should have scored, and that would have really tested Scotland, but they're doing well, maybe deserve the luck given the work they're putting in, but Belgium get a sniff of goal tonight. If they're able to take it as a cut offside there, then Scotland will be under pressure, but they've stood up to it so well so far. Yeah, they have indeed, and I just think, again, Conor Barron gave the ball away there, which has been very unlike him in this match. He's not well offside that one um, it's been very unlike him in this match I don't think it would be a bad thing if Scott Gamble does turn to his bench um, to replace some of the guys that have put in a power of work just for that freshness freshness of mind as well Roman's there running that high ball against Finn Robertson but he has to work hard here you go CK Romeo Vermant who really should have scored to pull one back yeah. for the Belgians. Through the Lyson. Arna Engels. Mullen wanting his goalkeeper to come there. Opts to play it back to him. But again, this is going to come right back here. You look how compact Scotland are. All five defenders right across the width of the 18-yard box. Belgium looking to breach the Scotland goal, but not with crosses like that. Barron now to Bowie. Not got many white jerseys forward, but keeping possession key is divine. Loves it forward. Maybe just a bit of panic there. You can see Lyle Cameron telling him just to calm down. Yeah, I, I would again put that down to tiredness and, and you know <laughs> exhaustion with the amount of work they've, they've put in tonight. I know that sounds daft. You know, professional footballer should be able to play 90 minutes however um, you know when you put that much work and concentration into the game mistakes do creep in and Mullen again showing his importance at the back making sure the ball blasted away it's going to come back CK to the back post this time two Romans too high for him minutes plus added on time to go Scotland in a great position in Belgium with a two goal advantage but the Belgians yet again looking to try and breach that Scotland back line the foul on Barron by Romeo Vermant and the referee shows a yellow card he's not happy either no he's not I think it's a bit of frustration, both from the situation Belgium find themselves in and the good opportunity that he missed. It's a harsh yellow card. Very, very harsh yellow card. I mean, he tries to block the clearance. Conor Barron almost fakes to kick the ball. And he slides in, but he slides past the ball. Free kick maybe, but certainly not a yellow card. And Scott Campbell there will be happy and will be wanting to make sure his team keep going. King just getting enough on that. 
Another one that's put in a lot of work, got about his business quietly to help out that back line. I mean, overall, they've been superb to a man. They really have, look. I mean, really tricky fixture, and they've come out and they've executed Scott Gamble's game plan perfectly. Anna Enkels, they play it down that line. Mullen to get it clearer now. Denham. Robertson nearly caught on the byline there. Scotland doing it up. But you look at the Scotland team, you do think there is experience in there. There's players that have played in Europe this season and last season. Leon King played in six either Champions League or Champions League qualifying games. And Nielsen played in the Conference League group stage. Barron has done that this season. Um, so there is experience there. Ben Doak playing in Europe too with Liverpool. So Scotland players growing and learning all the time. Yeah, and I think it's something we're guilty at, even at you know full team level. You know, we talk about you know we've got a great team and work ethic, and we've got good players. That's I know I know Belgium have dominated the ball, but we've got, we've got good players, um, both at full national team level and quite clearly at twenty ones levels as well, um, and they're both doing as proud at the moment, both the sides. Evan Bowett there to get it clear on his first anniversary of his first cap. Here's Cameron again, buzzing about as usual. Bowie just unlucky there. We have five minutes of regulation time to play. Scotland might not have had a lot of possession, but they certainly have had the goals in this game. 2-0 up over in Belgium. Can they hold out for this one and get the three points? And big three points it would be as two Romans has caught an offside position. Well, that's another thing the defence have done so well, Look, is to hold the line, because they've caught Belgium offside numerous times in this second half. Oh, maybe they're slightly lucky again, though, you have to say. You just take it as a given that he's offside, but Bowett's actually deeper than the rest. Um, but they have legitimately caught them offside a good few times. Well, after this one, Scotland back in action on Tuesday evening away in Hungary and Budapest. Make sure you join us for that one on the Scottish National Team's YouTube channel. We'll have live coverage of Hungary against Scotland. And if Scotland can get over the line tonight, it's looking good so far, then that is a huge game in terms of this group. Well, there could be a booking here for time wasting. It looks as if that was a yellow card. Aidan Denham, uh, I think that was. So a yellow card, but maybe just managing the game well. Bowie again, trying to keep that in. It's rolled out though. So goal kick. CK's ball down the line. Vermont giving chase, but he couldn't keep that one in. Well, it's been a positive performance so far with three minutes to go, Rory. Who is your man of the match this evening? Well, I think every player in a Scotland jersey, whether it be Kieran Slicker in the goals, right through to the strikers, I think they've all pos uh, have a positive impact in the game. But I do think, and I thought he'd have ran out of juice by now, but he's proven me wrong. I think with his goal, his composure, his work rate, his quality on the ball, Lyle Cameron would be my man of the match. And he scored that second goal that gives Scotland that cushion. He was so clever about it as well, linking up well with Doak. But he's put in such a tower of work this evening. That's one man there with the arm across Leon King. So Scotland get the free kick from the Czech referee, Marek Radina. Well, he leads with the elbow, so I think he's slightly lucky having just been booked. We'll see it again here, I might be wrong. Yeah, I think he leads with the elbow there. And I think that's dangerous. I think he's very lucky not to see red for a second yellow can't do that these days Scott came on his backroom staff so Graham Smith and Christoph Berra delighted with this Kieran Bowie could be going into the book here 
I'll get confirmation of that, but it might have been Adam Devine. Just double checking, but uh, it was Devine with the booking. Scotland managing this game really well so far. Devine coming back into this under 21 squad. The likes of Mike Johnson out. They're originally being in the squad as the ball goes into the box, and Scotland again trying to do enough. Devine very composed on that occasion, Bowie has to get it clear, it's going to come back, Scotland know that though, they're prepared for it, they've done so well so far, two Romans, now in Bangula, Mullen again, fantastic defending from the Scots, a minute to go, plus what's added on, there has been multiple substitutions, but at this point Scotland want the win but they also want the clean sheet and they would certainly deserve it with the effort they've put in, CK just kept it in but he couldn't control it and Bowie now looking to see what's in front of him and maybe just takes the wrong option Cameron was beside him he beat the first player not the second and now Arna Engels well he's had a couple of efforts from distance in the first half goes wide to CK the cross comes in it's off the crossbar danger not over Engels with the shot blocked and Cameron able to get it away for Scotland well that would have put an interesting spin on the last couple of minutes of the game in stoppage time. Yeah, Kieran Bowie couldn't resist to try the nutmeg and it came off, but he, he lost possession. And that's a poor ball by the Elgin in the dying seconds. But it's a wonderful ball in, you have to say, after that by TK, who's done that all game. And my goodness, he gets up well, say that. And the crossbar comes to Scotland's rescue there. And you have to say it has fallen kindly to us in the box at times, but we've got to give our defenders credit. Well, we're into the first of five added minutes here in Belgium, and the crossbar helping Scotland out there in terms of their quest to not only win the game but keep the clean sheet. Yusuf Silla with a great header, and it was a brilliant ball. The delivery, his deliveries from open play have been much better than his corner kick CK this evening. There's been many of them along with Engels putting balls in. Belgium not giving up yet though. And Bangula. Linking up with his fellow sub, Marco Canna. Arna Engels, he's thinking about going from goal again. King does enough. Good block. CK with another teasing ball. Header back into the danger zone. And Lewis Nielsen doing enough to put off the substitute. Vermont to make sure he didn't get the shot away. I think it was actually centre-back Layson who finds himself in the middle of the goals of eight yards out and good defending, really good defending I have to say. Oh, Kai Fotheringham getting ready to make his under-21 debut. Plenty of confidence as well. He scored the winner last weekend for Dundee United. Last Friday night that is uh, against Dunfermline Athletic. Sorry, he got the opener uh, for Dundee United in that game and he scored seven goals this season. But you will Get the last few minutes of stoppage time. King is more up than out. Does better second time around, but it falls to a Belgian player. Now Marco Canna, Samuel Mbangula, the man who plays for Juventus. Only his second cap at under 21 level. Tim Robertson didn't do enough, and it's allowed Mbangula to keep possession, but not like that. He didn't know what he was doing there. <laughs> yeah, you summed that up well. Look, he was tying himself in knots, wasn't he? Ball lofted in, slicker. Fantastic goalkeeping. Well, he made that brilliant save at 1 0 in the first half. He made another good one, although the offside flag was up. But that's exactly what you want for your goalkeeper deep into stoppage time. Yeah, this stage of the game, for sure. And I think the three centre backs have cleared everything in their path at times. And slicker comes out and takes the pressure off and does his job and does it well. And Fotheringham might get on for his debut. We'll wait and see. Well, the ball's out now. It's a great chance. Have you been impressed with, with Kai Fotheringham this season getting games for, for Dundee United? Yes, I watched him in the home match against Inverness live a couple of weeks ago. And although it wasn't Dundee United's best performance of the season, I thought he looked lively. He linked up well with Mole up front. And he's done the rounds in terms of loan moves. So, and that man there, he's replacing Kieran Bowie. Can be very proud of his performance tonight. Again, 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 again
Not long to go now. And again, Lewis Nielsen doing so well. Will Belgium get something from this game? It looks very doubtful just now, despite all the possession as the ball goes in here. The ball's all the way across the face of goal. And it just doesn't fall for Belgium. That probably sums up their night. Yeah, it does. You know, and I think their coach, Gilles Swerts, will, you know, he'll probably give it after the game. How did we not win this game? I mean, they should have scored at least a couple of goals for sure. But they didn't, they're not taking their chances. What if Scotland have been clinical? And at this level, you have to be. Oh, Lucas Stassen put the ball in. Oh, and that hit off a Scotland head to go behind for a corner. That might have just been dipping in at the near post. It's touch and go that he's offside there as well. Substitute, but it's not falling for Belgium inside the box. But I would be hasten to be too critical in Scotland. I think they've also defended very well. Arna Engels to deliver this one. Again, Scotland, it's Ibn Bow at this time, forcing the Belgians wide. Hugo CK, the ball comes in, it could fall for Vermont. And Bangula, oh, it's hit the bar again. Well, another chance for Belgium, right on full time here. We're almost at the end of the game, but they nearly got something out of this one. It's a lovely angle, I've seen it. He's just trying to wrap the foot round it, bend it into the far post, and Slicker, to be fair to him, just gives up. He just watches it, and it clips the outside of the, the post high up. Full time, and a fantastic win for Scotland in Belgium. They win this one by two goals to nil. Mullen with the opening goal on 12 minutes. A big win for Scott Gemmell's team. It was Lyle Cameron with the second on the half-hour mark. But an absolute landmark win here in this group for Scotland. They've been able to go away to Belgium and get the victory that puts them in a great position now to really kick on in this group. Gilles Svertz will be wondering how his team didn't manage to at least get on the score sheet. Martin van der Voort will be disappointed with his role in the second goal. But it's Scotland to have the three points. Scotland to have the clean sheet. And Scotland who go on to nine points and join Belgium on that points mark in the group. Certainly a big win for Scotland this evening, Rory. Yeah, and I, you know they did ride a luck at times. I think Scott Gemmell will be the first to, to admit that it just wasn't Belgium's night. However, you know coming out to Belgium with a game plan to set up to frustrate Belgium at times and have quality on the counter attack to, to hurt Belgium and score goals. You know the plan worked perfectly, and I thought. Um, it's very easy to, easy to get caught up defending deep. They didn't do that. They impact, impacted the game going forward as well. And whilst Belgium created a lot of chances, I think that Scotland deserved, deserved to win that match. Well, let's look at the key moments of this game. And this was the opening goal. And Scotland maybe just had to settle, and this certainly helped them early on in the game. Yes, it did. A heavy touch by Devine, to be fair. It did bobble, and it's a fantastic ball in. And Mullen gets between the two centre-backs or it's the full-back CK actually and Spielers and nips in and heads the ball home for 1-0 yeah fantastic header there by the Leeds United man so important for Scotland to, to get on the score sheet early and give, in the, give them something to hang on to and build on and you can see that why Adam Devine is just as comfortable at left-back because I mean you wouldn't have never have guessed that was his so-called weaker foot with that cross well, that was an important one for Scotland. Défaite, vous, uh, but then you see the second goal for Scotland here. and This was important uh, at a time where they were able to take advantage of the error. Yeah, quality as well. Uh, quality that Belgium didn't show in the final third. And that's what I mean. I mean, Belgium look at the stats and they look at all the different things. Well, Scotland had quality when it mattered. You know, the first time pass from Barron, the quick thinking of Doak, the disguised pass, the quality on the pass the um, intelligence from Lyle Cameron to hold the defender off and turn and hit it so early that a very experienced goalkeeper, Van der Voet, has no chance whatsoever. Clinical, decisive, not things you would always over the years have associated with Scotland. Um, everything was shown there and um, they deservedly took a 2-0 lead at that point. And you gave uh, Lyle Cameron the Man of the Match award as well because not only was that a key moment for him but uh, he worked so hard but Scotland did have to defend and had that gone in with 14 minutes to go 
from Vermont, then it could have been a different game. Yeah, it's just off the bench, which probably worked against him, to be fair. Um, he's just on the pitch, but he slashes at it, he panics. Really, it's easy to say this, you know, sitting commentating on it, but you know, he should just lift that into the net. It's not a particularly difficult skill, although Slicker is out quickly, and it was a chance gone. It seemed to have his shin there in the end. Uh, but this one, again, off the crossbar with a minute to go, um, it was Yusuf uh, Silla with the header. Uh, but again, Scotland, maybe at that point you felt their luck was in. Yeah, but again, for me, he's got to score. He has to score that chance. Um, it's a great opportunity. He misses it. It's gone. Whereas Scotland didn't miss any of their chances. And that's why they won the match. Well, Samuel Mbangula, a man who playing for Juventus now. Uh, unlucky there with this one. You could see what he was trying to do right late on in the game. Yeah, good technique. You could see exactly what he was trying to do. As you say, just nestle it in the far corner. However... The post came to Scotland's rescue and we head to Hungary with three points in the bag. Well, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Belgium had 16 attempts on goal but failed to score. Scotland had two attempts and scored with both. That's why Scotland win this one 2-0 in Belgium and take all three points. Join us again on Tuesday on the Scottish National Team's YouTube page for live coverage of Hungary against Scotland. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time.